Welcome back guys, as you've seen that's me all set up I've got the uh, sectional flue today, it's the second time I've used it, the first time was up in Glencoe That's a bit of a game changer that, with regards to setting up It's a bit bulky, but six sections of that will go in the stove I've got seven on there That gives what, maybe two, two and a half foot above the, uh, the apex of the tent there So, shouldn't get any sparks, I've got all my wood here, that's all hardwood Stove set up Lights are on. Uh, new purchase is a sleeping bag. It is on. a Snug Pack Elite 5 reflector thing or something. It is a bit of a beast of a bag. Yeah, it's actually got a bit there. So if you see it now because the light, you can fold over the, the toolbox because I'm a short arse that suits me. And it gives your feet a wee bit more uh, insulation. But this is rated to, I think it's minus 15. There we go, comfort minus 15. Lows of minus 20, if it gets that tonight, I'll just be getting in the car, I think. Uh, it is a lump of a bag, it's 2.4 kilograms, and even when it's compressed into that sack, it's, it's pretty bulky. But that's, that's a trade off of not having a down sleeping bag, but it does down to minus 15, so. That's a bit reassuring. Last time I was out in the old drab bag, I think it's lost its thermal properties. <laughs> it was minus five and I could feel the cold certainly in my feet. But anyway, I'll just go and bring some food in, get the fire going. We've got enough wood to last us tonight and probably tomorrow, but it's just a, a one night stop. Over here, that's the Kyle's of Butte up there. The saltwater log. Tidal. I think the tide's just on its way out now. There's a seal out there in the middle of that capture, if you can see or not, just eyeballing it. But it is quite a calm night considering it was blowing a gale and chucking it down uh, on the road over here. It has been raining since I set up, so as you'll have seen I've done most of the setup in the tent to keep dry, so at least in that tent you can move about and set up, so it's quite good. You can keep out the elements, so I'm, as I say, I'm just going to get the fire going, bring the food in and maybe get something to eat. Well, I'm going to have a beer actually, that's the priority. I forgot to say, the tent I've got tonight is the uh, Toplander tent, it's that cheap one I bought for 60 quid, brand new, off of eBay. And they were listing them on Amazon for £70 as well. I think they're all sold out now, but we'll see how a £70 tent, or £60 tent goes tonight. And it has been raining since I got here, there's been a few gusts of wind. Believe it or not, it's quite calm out there, but it is a westerly wind, so we've got a bit of protection over the back there. I'll just put the guy lines on there. To get these are reflective and you get these wee tensioners. These aren't really the best, but that's what you get for £60. Used to be sitting alright, I think I'm in a slight hollow there, so it could could have had a better pitch, but the water certainly ponding along that skirt there, if you can see it, so it's no seeping through yet. Uh, you can see that or not, camera's going dark, hold on There you go, that's a tent peg Look at the length of that <laughs> They bend pretty easily, I mean the ground is kind of hard here It's stony, I was just putting that one on my foot and it snapped so it does not bode well but £60 for the tent, you could splash out in some new pegs So anyway, enough rambling Don't think I've done anything so <laughs> Well I brought the food in, so I'm going to get the fire going and then crack open the beer Got to clean the glass last time I was out. Tut tut. Not to worry. Hopefully, once we get this going, it'll clear a wee bit.
can see that or not. It's getting a bit dark, but I just stuck some rocks off the beach around the snow scots. Not that I think I'll let in much of a draft, but just more so to stop the noise if the wind picks up. And there has been a few gusts, so that will serve me well. I don't know what it is with the, the door today, but just the way the tent's sitting, but a bit of a struggle to get it right down to the bottom, but it is almost on the ground there, so that will do it. And it's absolutely roasting in here. <laughs> it's probably that warm, I don't need a fire right now, to be honest, but looks good anyway. You should hear that or not. It's the rain hitting off the flue. It's most and hot. Can't see much up the top of the loch now. I've another built a rain can. This will test out the tent. Cheers! As the tent almost blows away. Just close that door a wee bit. I need to keep it open because it's boiling in here. Got the stove uh, tucking over quite nicely. Certainly makes a difference. I think I'm used to the the one tiger smoky hut with the air blowing through it all the time. This tent is also a kind of thicker material as well. But mind you, it's I think it's about eight degrees or something just now. Nine degrees outside. So the stove is definitely an overkill just now. But nice bit of ambiance while I make a beer. And that's why you don't wear nice things when you go camping, especially for a hot stove. I actually did that last time. I was out up Glencoe. It is a, an older jacket. I suppose you could patch it up. And for some bizarre reason, I did it in the Steve as well. There you go. It's more of a slash there. I don't know what happened to that. But anyway, look after your gear. Watch out for hot things. You hear the oyster catchers outside going mental. Just took another log on there. I've got the, uh, the front vent closed over completely. But see these stoves, obviously with the flue being at the back, they just want to draw to the back all the time. So I think the secret is just that roasting hot damper. <laughs> Closing it down, kind of slows the flames down a wee bit. They're not getting pulled towards the flues so much. You always have it open a wee bit, especially when you put new wood on the stove. Definitely have that uh, damper open a wee bit. I think uh, the last time the rolling flue, when I had that closed over and I put new wood on it, the smoke was coming out the side of the, the stove pipe, right up the, the fold or the crease or whatever you want to call it. Anyway, beer time. It's so moving on to number two. Went down quite well. Madri from Madrid. Mas pabidas, por favor. Haha. <laughs> Cheers. Right, we're moving our way round the world. This is a Japanese lager or beer. Made from rice, asa. Proud to say that. Motonomi. Cheers. Hope I never offended anybody with my Google Translate Japanese. <laughs> uh, and there's tonight's dinner sirloin steak. It's not the biggest, but it should fit in the frying pan and some pepper sauce. So, once we get the stove to the right temperature, I don't know how to gauge it, but it's ticking over quite nicely. So, I think I might get the, the steak on just now.
Cheers. Dishwasher. Well, it's half seven. Still got the front door open. Well, it is raining, but hopefully, just in that bit of the tent, the ground is pretty saturated, but doesn't matter. I'm high and dry here. The lights are on. Head torch is on, the stove jack, if you're fortunate enough to watch one of my other videos, <laughs> when I bought this tent I set it up but the stove jack uh, arrived with no hole in it whatsoever so I cut that to exactly 60mm so it seems to be keeping the rain out just now, there's nothing running down there at all, when I was outside earlier you can actually hear the rain just uh, evaporating as it hits it so that's not too bad, I think that's the right thing to do. There's a wee bit of discoloration around it, so I hope it's not going to catch fire. Remembering this as a £60 tent and a stove jack is probably about 15 quid at the best of times, so I'll keep an eye on that. Uh, I've had a couple of beers, as you know, so I'll keep track of them. I'll uh, enjoy everyone with you as I open it. <laughs> I don't think my Japanese or Spanish is going to get any better now, so it'll just be a cheers or a slange. But, uh, firewood's alright. I think that's about two bags in here. There's a bag of kind of birch stuff I, I bought from somewhere. And then the other stuff's a random mix of hardwood. But I don't actually need it, but it's nice just to have a fire. That's the, the tent TV, I guess. A couple other new purchases. I bought a couple of these wee bags. Looking like kids. <laughs> uh, lunch boxes. Looks like my daughter's, but it's a bit more serious. It's got all kind of things here for... Well, it should be cables, but I've got coffees in there, and I've got all my uh, my stove, gas, titanium pot. I think, what else have I got in there? I think my cup's in there. And my cup as well. So it's quite handy, keeps it all together. Easier to get to than pulling out a wee uh, stuff sack or whatever, dry bag that I've been using. I actually have used it for the tech, as it was uh, originally intended. A uh, couple of cables and a battery pack, basically. Uh, I think they were about seven... 7 quid each or something, 7 99 and then because it was on Amazon or not Prime I had to spend another couple of quid so I bought this torch if you can see that or not I think they're steaming up in here that's just a wee head torch it's quite good, it's got a spotlight on it a floodlight function and everything else and it's actually got a setting it's like a PIR thing so you just put your hand in front of it to cancel it and bring it back on and I think it will stay with whatever setting was last on it. So, and it's got the red function as well. It's got the red will either stay on or it'll flash strobe. I think so. Quite handy if you're having a, some kind of illegal rave, I guess. So, just something else to make life a wee bit easier. Better stick a log on that. Apologies, I forgot to crack that one open. Me, manners cost nothing, eh? <laughs> anyway, down the hatch. Cheers. Nobody's counting. Cheers. Cheers. Last one. Cheers. Right folks, that's midnight, or just past midnight, so a good evening, so we've got some wood left, in fact quite a bit of wood left, that will do tomorrow for the bacon rolls, getting the stove on, there's no beer left so it's definitely bedtime, uh, the rain stopped, the wind stopped so things seem to have 
calm down. That's the first time I've had the door closed tonight and it's absolutely roasting in here. So I'm down to one layer and then I'm going to get into my minus 15 sleeping bag. When it's probably the mildest night I've been out. <laughs> Certainly this year and probably the tail end of last year. Anyway, I'm going to switch off this fancy torch. PIR. <laughs> and uh, hopefully I'll make it to the morning. So, good night folks and we'll see you later. Morning. Find the light switch. Mm, light switch isn't working. There we go. We go through the full cycle of lights. <laughs> it's a uh, ten to seven. I did wake up just after five. Get back to sleep to just after six. Have a good night. Certainly rained a bit last night. Still a bit of wind about as well. Cam just now, you can actually hear it coming over the hill behind you. It hits the trees before it hits me, so you can, if you're awake and aware, you can hear the gusts coming towards you. The tent survived, the 60 pound tent survived. Probably not see that, but a lot of condensation inside. To be expected with a single skin tent, I suppose. I don't think it's rain getting through, there's nothing coming through any of the seams or anything. So, I think what we'll do, there's my little PIR fancy head torch thing for £10 working. You can actually see the condensation <laughs> right to the whole tent, so I'm going to put the stove on just now. Sit back and relax, there's no hurry to get home today, so I'll get the stove on. Don't really need the heat to be honest, it's cosy enough in this sleeping bag. Uh, but I'll get the stove on, cook something later. Once the daylight comes in a wee bit more, I'll have a wee look outside. I'm not getting up just now, because I'm lazy. <laughs> the door over there. That's as far as I could get that zip down last night. Maybe just the way I'm pitched. It's nothing to do with the tent. So, I'll catch up soon. See how that goes. It's a big stick I'm trying to start the fire with, but I'm going to keep a couple of bits of kindling to start the fire. Good morning. Even a bit of blue sky after all that rain last night. First light's just coming in. They seem to have calmed down for the time being. You can see the moon up there or not, in behind those trees. Right, our catchers are still here, you can hear them in the background. Spoke too soon, listen to that rain. Chucking it down outside.
all kicking off now. Oh gee. That's one of the best purchases. Is that non-stick frying pan? Fire maple. Having a wee look, see how the tenant fared in the rain. Definitely plenty of fondant water in the skirt. Quite light here, and it's quite dark down here, the material, so I don't know if it's getting saturated or not, but the water's still beating on top of it. That seems alright. I did take quite a few heavy showers last night. The stove jack never let in that much water. So. So far so good for 60 quid. Oh, there's a guy lying. Oh, gee whiz, they don't reflect in daylight. <laughs> I actually hardly came out of the tent last night in the dark, so it was that miserable and wet. It's definitely a lot darker. The kind of lower sections there. Might just be the condensation inside as well at the tents. It's no dried inside yet with the heat of the stove. But yeah, anyway. It is dry inside, despite the discoloration in the material there. That looks as if there's going to be another shower. Surprise, surprise. And we look north. The hair in there on the shore, but you'll never see that. You better break this there still. Oh, so the hair down there. We fish about here and I need to start tidying this place up a wee bit. Well, I just stuck the last log of the trip on the fire there. Good for keeping the coffee warm. That's the leftovers. Out of two bags, so I'm just gonna go and stick that in the motor. Keep that till next time. It's that the uh, ten pound head torch. It might actually been twelve pound. It's just a uh, USB charging, spotlight, floodlight. And it's got the red option as well, and it's got that kind of PIR sensor. Just move your hand in front of it. You can put it on and off, or you can just have a normal setting. Because if you brush against it, it puts the light on or off, which can be a pain sometimes when you're moving about the tent. But no, not bad for twelve quid. It lasted well last night. It was on that standby mode for the, the motion sensor, so... Anyway, back in its box. That's everything packed up, at least back to the cart. Just the stove to go, still a wee bit warm. I'll give that a wee minute or so to cool. Start stripping off these guy lines. Nice again now the showers are past.
Right, that's me all packed up. Managed to do it in the, the dry, but that's the rain back on again. Uh, I'd just like to thank everybody for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the video. It's a good video to make, a good wee night. Despite the wind and the rain, but that was to test that cheap tent. So I don't know if I'm about again, but hopefully we'll see you back. Cheers. Just while I'm in the area, uh, I'm just going to head for a wee walk down to a nice sandy beach. On Northern Survey maps, it is called Cobride Bay, but to the locals, it's called Austell Bay. So, been here many a time, down with the family and everything. So, I think it's about a mile's walk from here. So, might as well get some miles in when I'm out and about. We take a walk along here. It's only about a mile to this beach. Not far at all from the main road. The tide does come right up to about here. As you can see, for it changes colour there. A bit more salty, but it is super shallow. So in the summer, the two days of summer we get, the water here is. I'm going to say warm, but it's less cold. <laughs> but. And that is a stunning location. Freshwater river, down the salt water. There used to be a footbridge up here somewhere, I don't know if it's still in existence. Well, what the scene was, is the footbridge. <laughs> I picked up this wee path across the footbridge. I was going to try and go around past the coast or along the coast, should I say? But let's see where this takes us. Well, this is where the wee path leads to, right down onto the coast. A bit more rugged down here. Over there in the distance, probably not be able to make it out. But shrouded in cloud is Isle of Arran, and its mountains usually quite nice if they're snow capped from here. On a bright sunny day, unfortunately, it's not a bright sunny day. In fact, that's the rain coming on. It's never far away. So, what I'm going to do is hopefully not slide, but I'm just going to go over next to the water there and go back via the coastline, take me back into the beach. Hopefully, we'll get a, a different view of the beach to show you how vast it is. On a sunny day, but still a good walk no matter the weather.
Let's take another wee detour, <laughs> seeing that break in the trees, so I'll come up through that. Seems to be a wee path here. More likely to be a deer track, can't actually see any footprints on it. The amount of mud that's on it. But I'm sure there's something good at the end of it. Or maybe my untimely death, I don't know. A bit too wide to be a deer track. Well, that's handy, friends. Some things for putting out fires over there. Oh, there's a big gate up there, even better. What want you beating left in this thing. Maybe we've got a fire out. There's a V cairn, something significant. We've got this bank. And the V forested road. Don't have a clue for that. Just having a wee look, see where I am. Right at the end of forested road now. There's actually a wee beach, Ascog Bay. Never been to that before. I don't know if there's going to be a path that takes you around this road anywhere near that. The next sandy bit along here I've actually pitched up in this wee bit here before. Out in this kind of wee, it's not quite an island, there's a wee tiny causeway there, it's quite nice down there. I'm going to try and get through to Ascog Bay since I'm so close. Famous last words. It was only, I don't know, 500 metres in, or even 200 to 300 metres. Can I see? Anyway, might as well go and explore. Well, some kind of path here. You can almost see it. I'm taking my way back. Start to think this isn't a path anymore. I can see the sea. Just don't know how to get to it. This is a path or a ditch. I think it's a ditch. There's a stone wall over there. Still no path. I can see some water. It's definitely a deer path there. Bay. So we walk out to this wee peninsula a bit. Go ahead and get all across the dry feet. See what's over the other side. That bit over there. Where's my finger? Can't you see my finger in this? That bit there is where I camp, just the other side of that. And over there is a wee lighthouse and that tiny little island there. I don't think I'm going any further. Another wee bit of Ascog Bay. Let me see a bit of sand here. Just need to find my way back. doesn't need them a far more. Mm -hmm. Right folks, that is me. I'm done now. That two mile walk turned into a six mile walk. So I'm just going to definitely end the video here. Just for hanging about with these guys. 
Uh, thanks for watching and I'll hopefully be back soon. Cheers.